Okay, you knew it was gonna happen. We're coming back. It has been so long. I know I have not kept up posting interviews. That is because I actually got locked out of my YouTube account a little bit ago. But we're back. More midweek music maelstrom. And as you know, I have such a soft spot for punk bands, metal bands, punk bands, and we just have so many to choose from here on the Cryptnotic page. And this time I had to go with long shot odds. I love their sound. And today we have got uh Corey Whitmere, drummer, long shot odds. Oh wow, I'm so glad I get to sit down with you. So how long have you been in long shot odds? Like how long has this group been around? Well, we uh, it's kind of funny. The singer and I have been playing since 2007. Oh, um, when the band started in 2015, he was playing bass. And then um, probably the end of 2018 is when we uh, decided to get a, another member in the band, Kellen, which is our bass player now, in 2018. And so we've been going on since 2015. And when I say been going on, when the pandemic hit, we were still playing shows. We we're playing little no name places, little garages, little people's houses. We were just kept on going. We never stopped. I love that energy and that spirit. That is just, that's punk. Yes, man. And so I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. You're all right. I mean, a lot of people gave us a little grief, but I mean, we all wore masks. We all like, you know, and we, we told people, hey, if you don't want to come, you feel unsafe, don't come. Mm -hmm. We're going to still play. And and the whole time, I think uh, Kellen, which is a firefighter for a living, got sick one time through the whole pandemic. The whole pandemic. Yes. And I'm and I uh, and I work out in the environment every day seven days a week so and i never i never caught any symptoms i know of but i wore masks so okay so and you I just you didn't let anything get in your way you put on your shows you did your music yes ma'am yeah, i'm happy for you so i was giving you guys a listen um a few weeks ago okay it, guys it took us a while to get to this interview like a lot of roadblocks popped up so that's why it took a minute um, so twice I listened to your music while I was in the shower, once while I was just like on the road and blood and asphalt, like yeah. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. That is definitely up there is one that I can put on repeat. Yeah. Um, the whole so far to go album, I so I just kind of played it and I didn't really look at what I had on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And I noticed how fitting that you have like like the cover is like a road. Yes. Because when I was like midway through the album, my exact train of thought was this would be a great album to put on for like a fun road trip with friends. Right. So yeah. I thought that was so fitting. Yeah, and I, I have to give credit to uh, Patrick North, which is our singer for that. He um, um, he, he sings and plays keyboards now. And actually, our new album, he'll be playing some horns on that album, too that's different yeah so we we got he's very into um ska he's more into the ska movement than um than i am but uh you know i i enjoy it and um he's very much into no effects um a lot of people say when they hear us they hear no effects um, how do you feel about that comparison I play, I play music to play music. I don't, I don't ever base anything I do to anybody else. So I don't get upset, but I get. You, know you cut out there for a minute. Can you say that again? I don't really get too upset, but in some ways I do. But you know, it's it is what it is. I mean, at least somebody's saying we sound like somebody. You know. Do you think that it gets frustrating because you feel like they're not hearing you? Like they're quick to draw a comparison? Not really, because 
the only thing they compare us to with that band is the vocals. I believe. What, what other musicians have you been compared to, if any? <laughs> believe it or not, at one time, long time ago, um, in the previous band that me and him played in, uh, Pat, the singer, um, Social Social Distortion, which I did not hear that at all. I, I don't really get like a distortion vibe, no. No. Um, but I, they're both good. It's very, uh, he writes very uh, poppy, punk, when he writes music. Um, uh, when it comes to us, our our guitar player, which is phenomenal guitar player, probably the best musician, him and the bass player in the band, I would say. That, I mean, they understand music theory, all that kind of stuff. I don't. Um, but when he brings it in, he brings in his, you know, he usually comes in like two or three chords, and that's it. That's the song. And JJ, our guitar player, takes it and just morphs it, just makes it his own. It's JJ, really great when you have, you have someone who can do that, and you have like this cohesion with what right. the band members bring. And me and JJ, believe it or not, I met JJ when he was 16 years old. And um, I actually played in a band with JJ um, probably in 2002, 2003, which was an alternative rock band. And he was a metal guy. And I'm actually a thrash metal guy. So we started that alternative rock band in 2001, 2002, and you know kind of part ways i think it was in 2005 2006 and then i met patrick north which was moving up from uh, your your neck of was from florida he moved up to south carolina and uh he wanted to start a band and i actually uh the, the old guitar player we used to play in with uh this band i'm wearing you me and us lived downstairs from me and we started a punk band in 2007 and we went till 2015 playing. And one day the uh, guitar player in that band, you, me, and us decided he didn't want to play anymore. And Pat asked me if I still wanted to play. And I said, sure, I'm, I'm with it. You know, I still got a little bit left in me. <laughs> so how did you get started with your instrument? Like, what was it that made you decide I need to be a drummer? Uh, funny thing about that, I was never really into music. Um, you know, my brother, I have to say, he's nine years older than me. Um, in high school, he used to have the, uh, the Liberty Spikes and the, the Spike Hairs and the Collars and the, you know, the Chains and everything. Listen to the Misfits and listen to Cure, listen to all kind of other stuff, you know, and, um, uh, operation ivy and all that stuff and um i think it was about 14 years old my middle brother got a drum set okay my mom and dad bought him a drum set and um he never played it and i go in there and i mess around with it and then um then they sold it <laughs> like a month later <laughs> and then um and uh probably at the age of 15 one of my friends was starting a band his name's simpson hyatt still friends with him till this day he's like hey man starting a band i was like okay went to a, a guy's house guy's name's jason pillow went to his house didn't have a drum set didn't have anything. I was literally, it was like watching a little kid. I was back there playing with wooden spoons on pots. First band practice at 15 years old. Didn't know anything about a drum beat. Don't know how to read, don't know how to read notes. Don't know how to read anything. Oh. I know this that sounds funny and this is terrible. I that's hate to tell great, people this. <laughs> that's a great beginning. I feel like that is such a, the, those, the punk vibes are there. 
Right. And that, and then, you know, and I tell people, Hey, I didn't know anything about drums. Didn't know what a snare was. Didn't know what a tom was. Didn't know what a bass drum was. Didn't know anything. And, um, to start beating on stuff <laughs> and going with it. And, and, then, and how, how do you think your sound was at that time? Oh, terrible. <laughs> so I've always said, like, typically, if you're going to have like a good metal band, you need a solid drummer who right. knows his craft. Right. If you start a punk band and you don't have a good drummer or a good vocalist or a great guitarist, you still sound like a punk band. Yeah, it was a, it was definitely a punk band. Um, everybody in that band was pissed off at the world. Um, I'm a big old fan of the um, my my roots of punk is more like overseas. Um, I'm big into like the Exploit. Um, I'm trying to think of the other guys. You know, I I just I love the Exploit. I love their style when I was coming up and um, I just loved their way, how they did everything. And um, I would say that was my big fan. Uh, the other guys like the Misfits and stuff like that. When I was growing up, I was never a big Misfits fan. I don't know why, maybe it's, I don't know. I do I'm, like dancing. I do like his stuff. I just- I'm never... interviewing the Misfits um, rhythm guitarist on Monday. <laughs> Okay, well, don't show them this. <laughs> but no, I, I've I've listened to the Misfits. They're fine. I, I like the Misfits. It's just, um, you know, I was more into the, like the faster stuff, I guess you would say, and um, and um, and 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 the, and, the, and then I just kind of evolved. I played punk for so many years, you know, and and then and then start listening like Rancid and then Lagwagon and then prop gandhi and then listen to other stuff you know even like you know metallica and megadeth uh campbell corpse um deicide you know slayer just kept on going you know and you know and when i started getting my 20s i was like i'm gonna start a metal band you know getting big head go buy a big drum set you know do all that stuff found out i'm not that good at metal <laughs> so you know, metal was fun. I loved it. Um, and then, like I said, started an alternative rock band because I was like, well, I didn't mind. I didn't mind like listening to other stuff, like popular stuff on, on, um, you know, on the radio. I, I love Alice in Chains. I'm not gonna lie, to anybody. I, I, I love, you know, um, listening to uh, even Nirvana. I mean, a lot of people like give give you crap about like Nirvana. I'm like, I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. Like it's just a slower version of punk rock to me, you know, um, you know, and uh, you know Chris Cornell, I felt like was one of the best singers at one point, you know, I'm saying that passed away, and uh, just listen to those guys and anything that I felt was good, I I try to like mimic it, like I would listen to the music and try to mimic it in some way into the drums. And um, I never said I was a really good drummer to anybody. I say I try to do the best I can. And then like one day, like I said, when I met Pat in 2007, he was coming up from Florida. The guy was uh, Tyler Carolina was his name, was a guitarist player for uh, You, Me, and Us. And they were like, hey, we want to start a, a punk band. Can you play a one-two beat? I was like, well, this sounds like fun and easy. <laughs> and um, and then we started in 2007 and uh, in 2015, it's when Tyler decided to leave. And uh, Pat asked me if I knew a, a, a guitar player. I named a couple guys off. Um, and I said, hey, I, I actually know this guy named J.J. Dunlap. Um, I said, one thing, though. I say he plays in a metal band. I knew he played in a metal band at the time. His metal band he was playing in before he joined. Well, I kind I think they kind of dissolved, but uh, was called uh, Vindictive Sovereign. If you ever get a chance, you might want to research it. It's 
it's outrageous how it sounded. But um, they open up for a lot of good bands like Camel Corpse and DSI and, and uh, I can't remember all the bands they open up for. But um, and uh, he came in, and I believe Pat had that song "Blood and Asphalt" sitting back in his little closet, and he brought it out. That song has been redone uh, four or five times. Like you, the version you hear on the, um, on what you what you uh, listen to is a different I, I, is the, than the different version than we first recorded it. So it's been redone so many times, and uh, even now we we play it different than we played it on the album. You know what I'm saying? It's just it just gets added more and more stuff. So I mean, it, it's it's a fun ride. I mean, we all enjoy each other. We you know we try to get together at least once or twice a week and play as many shows as we can possible with you know working and kids and family so uh you know it's 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 an interesting but uh i tell people with uh with your kids you know if you got kids that are interested inter interested in music don't go out and buy like the most expensive guitar or drum set or anything like that just go buy them the cheapest thing you can find and if they like it and get into it then you can upgrade you always can upgrade music equipment you know so i'm sorry i kind of ran off i don't know you're remember. fine you're fine <laughs> so if people want to hear more of long shot odds where can they find your music what platforms are you on I pretty much know YouTube, Spotify, uh, pretty much anything except for I can't remember one of them that we don't we're not on, and I at it I I don't remember why. It's just we're not on one streaming platform. But pretty much anything, if you just punch in long shot odds, you'll find us somewhere. And is there any merch available? Oh yes, plenty of merch. And um, I remember I think you asked me. A couple other people have asked me about a merch store. We did have one at one time. I don't remember the Pacific website it was on. I think it's still up. But uh, well, you can check, and then you can send me a link, and I'll yeah. just link it in the description when this goes up on YouTube. Yeah, I usually just tell people just just to contact me. <laughs> you know, I'm like, hey. That's one thing good about Facebook or anything like that. I know, like, you know, people are like, oh, I don't really like giving out information. I'm like, well, this is the only way I know how to do it. We are very uh, DIY on stuff, you know. Um, we, we, we do everything on our own selves. So, I mean, merch is kind of the same way. Um, we have shirts. We just got hoodies. All the hoodies sold the last show, so... Now we have to get more hoodies. Uh, we have uh, CDs. I actually got some merch around here. If you want to wait one second, I can show you. Okay. Uh, so we have three different shirts. I should have had this ready when we started this. Sorry. You're fine. But this is the first design we came out with. Of course, it's your classic cassette. And we actually do have cassettes, cassettes, too, if anybody's interested. Um, and if you want to, you could go to River, River Monster Records, and we have some stuff on there. And that's the, uh, I think that was the second design. How appropriate. <laughs> And this is our last design, because we all felt like astronauts about, what, two two years ago, right? This is when all this crap started. So we felt like, and none of us were any of this. <laughs> none of us were any of this. So. <laughs> um, you know, I, and uh, like I said, we do have, uh, we do have patches and stuff like that. I'm sorry. But 
but anyway, I was trying to find CDs, but we do have patches and uh, buttons and um, no koozies or anything that like that. But yeah, usually I just tell everybody just look up my name, Corey Whitmira. If you want to online, send me a message. I'll give you a price. So and I follow Long Shot Odds on Facebook. Are you guys on Instagram? Yes, we are. Um, I usually don't get those messages. Pat Patrick does. I don't know why he can do that one and I can do this one to Facebook. But um, we are on Instagram. The same thing, Long Shot Odds. You can send a message through that and he usually gets with me. If it's something on uh, ordering or anything like that. Great. So are there any upcoming shows that we should know about? Um, March 26th. Is the soonest one we have. That that one's in Charlotte, at Tommy's Pub, um, playing with the uh, Charleston band called uh, Dog Bite, and two bands from Charlotte, and they are trying to remember their names, but they they lost my I can't remember their names. But anyway, two local bands from Charlotte, and uh, Dog Bite I know because I'm good friends with a couple of those guys down there in Charleston. Really good guys. Um, and they're, they're, they got a, they got a unique sound, a sound. They actually have two singers, uh, um, Charlie, uh, and, um, can't ever remember the girl's name. <laughs> Sorry, but they have a, a, a male and female singer kind of duet thing. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I, I enjoy it a lot. And, um, Chris O'Quinn is their guitarist, and I'm really good friends with him. And he's a really good guitarist, and he's been around forever like me. We just never gave up, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Yes, I appreciate it more than you know. All right, um, everyone, you're going to find links in the description to get merch, music, and show updates for Long Shot Odds. I highly recommend you check them out on Spotify. Um, I'm currently following them on Spotify. Please give Blood and Asphalt a listen. I will happily link that as well in the comments. And my current favorite album is So Far To Go. But it appears you have... That's your only full album, right? That's our only full album. It yeah. is awesome. Listen to it start to finish. It is great for a road trip, trust me. Corey Whitware, right here, the drummer of Longshot Odds. You have been fantastic and i cannot wait to help people find your music i appreciate the interview thank of you of course it's my pleasure and you guys make sure you click the subscribe button we're gonna be here hopefully every week you know once the whole youtube thing is fixed <laughs> bye guys bye guys